Okay, here we have your Renault Scenic. Certainly a very popular car, that's for sure. With families and what have you. First thing I want to pick up on this car is the steering is actually quite heavy. Um, it's not an easy car to turn at all when you're not moving very fast. See if we can do a 0 to 60 test. The roads are a little bit wet and there's a front wheel drive car, so 3, 2, 1, 0. Well, it's obviously not built for its speed, this car. I don't know why manufacturers are a little bit stingy with the engines in these cars, because Chrysler do the same sort of vehicle and stick a quite a beefy engine in. It would be nice to have a bit of power with one of these cars. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to have five people in here. It does take a bit of a strain on the car, so why not give it an engine that can deal with it? I suppose at the end of the day, being a front-wheel drive is probably not going to work out. Anyway, back to basics. The mirrors on the side, way too small. Can't really see what's going on. I will say, though, they're in a good position because a lot of cars, they're way back and very low. You can look at that mirror and that mirror without tilting your head. It's just a quick glance with your eyes, which is good. You need to know where you've been when you're driving. Rear view vision. You've got an annoying uh, seatbelt hanging down from the head lining, but the headrests don't really block the option. The, uh, vision so that's all pretty cool instrument cluster here well it is partially obstructed by the top of the steering wheel and it is very low down so it could be highly a lot more visible you know a lot of these French cars have these speedos and all that up here makes a big difference center console very basic you can operate that without taking your eyes off the road however it is a bit of a stretch to get to so it could have been brought forward a bit more this is the 5 speed manual, it could definitely do with a 6 gear, especially on the motorway. The driving position I don't think is very comfortable, it's very much like sitting on a park bench. I wouldn't want to be in this position for too long. Steering wheel is low down, you do feel a bit top heavy on this car, it's almost like sitting on a stool and driving. Now if I give a bit of a wiggle test, give an idea what this car sort of sits like. It's not that bad actually, it does have a bit of roll bit of a wobble there and I wouldn't fancy going around a corner too fast in this or furthermore doing an emergency swerve because I don't think you'd be able to keep the vehicle under control. But the steering is a little bit vague as well. Now this car has done 70,000 miles so you're going to have some wear and tear but you know I'm moving this steering wheel quite a lot before this car goes anywhere. That's not a good sign at all and it's a sign of very poor build quality. Brakes themselves, well the car stops, that's about it really. I don't feel any ability to apply a gradual pressure and I don't feel a very smooth braking action and I don't feel the calipers working in harmony really. It feels like each wheel is working independently which is not a good thing. This is by no means an advanced car and it really shows. It's very cheap, it's quite gnarly and I think if you're going to be forking out for one of these basically I, I, I think you're going to have problems with a car like this it's not going to last long it's going to need parts changing every now and then and to be honest it's a crap ride there's a lot better cars out there than this one in this class uh, probably one of the better ones is something like the VW Charan which is similar to the Say Alhambra and the um, Ford Galaxy. This, as far as people carrying, it's a bit of a flunk, I'm afraid.